Hello, welcome to our second You Are My Borough of this week with myself, Dom Shaw and Scott Wilson, both of the Northern Echo. And as promised, we're looking ahead to the We Are Tees derby at the Stadium of Light this Saturday. We're recording this on Thursday morning before Michael Carrick's press conference on Thursday afternoon and before Regis Labrisa's press conference on Thursday afternoon as well, because there's going to be some interesting injury lines to come from both, I think, which we'll which we'll get into. Um, but yeah, forgive us if, if we're slightly off the mark with anything and things change in the in the hours ahead. Um, do subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already. Those subscribing numbers have, uh, have shot up in the last couple of months. So we really appreciate that. Keep tapping away at uh, subscribe if you haven't already and do uh, get involved with the comments because we appreciate that as well. And if you're listening on YouTube, on uh, your podcast platform, sorry, then rate and review. How are we feeling, Scott? All set for Saturday? I'm really looking forward to it. I am. I am. I am. I'm, I'm putting it out there straight away. I'm, I'm having this as a derby. Sun, Sunderland fans will say it's not the derby, fine. Borough fans will say, well, you know, Leeds is a big game, this, that and the other. But listen, it's two North East teams playing against each other. Um, it's it's For me, it's Borough's two biggest games of the season until we get to the business end and, you know, maybe there's a promotion decider or a playoff game or whatever. But in terms of the regular 46 games, home and away against Sunderland are the two biggest games for me. Oh yeah, I, I I absolutely don't dispute that. I, I, as you say, I, I, from from Sunderland's perspective, clearly the derby is the Newcastle game. But I, I've always seen this game, always seen this game as a derby, and and I think the strength of feeling when you get to the game backs that up, and there'll undoubtedly be that on Saturday, won't there? It'll be a belting atmosphere, full house. It, it, yeah, it, it, and it's, it's, a game it's, that's, games. it's a game that's starting to get a bit of a narrative, you know. I mean, we talk all right, Sullivan fans might say that the derby is Newcastle, but the reality is they played Newcastle once in an absolute blue moon and they got played off the park in the FA Cup, didn't they? You know, it, they haven't got a narrative against Newcastle in the last decade, whereas Sunderland Borough actually there's been a few ding dong games in the last 10 years or so. Um, and so you know, I, I think there is a bit of, of added feeling that that's built up just over the, the kind of rivalries between these two teams in the last few years, because it's it's kind of um, to and fro, hasn't it? We, we were just talking about that, weren't we, beforehand, and um, the kind of like standout games, standout memories. It's it's weird, isn't it? How you remember so much from certain games and then other games completely slip, off, right. slip yeah. off your radar. So I'd forgotten about that 3-3 until we looked at it there where McManaman... Equalised yeah. something in the last minute and celebrated in front of Pulis because had there been a bit of niggle at was it West Brom when they both yes. been that. Um and yet when there was those flurry of cup games between them, when I think Borough might have been in the championship and some were in the Premier League at the time, and and there was replays, wasn't the bar I remember Barry Robson scoring, but then conceding yeah. the late goal and booting himself daft afterwards in frustration. Um like those games, I remember like they were yesterday. It's funny, isn't it? I'll I'll Certain games pass you by in certain living yeah. years. Yeah, it is. I mean, Sunderland Borough games. The first thing that flashes into my mind, but I think this is only because it's been repeated so much, is the Catamore Ledbitter going hell for leather, standing over each other. Obviously, Cat Cats playing for Borough at the time, Ledbitter at Sunderland, and obviously their careers flipped later on. Um, but like I say, I couldn't tell you what happened in the game. I couldn't even tell you which game it was. I just that image has kind of been repeated and we've used it in the paper countless times to kind of flag up the derby. So that's straight there. Um, I, I I kind of remember the two games from the season that both went down, bizarrely. We were talking about mm -hmm. that as well, weren't we? That, that Borough won at Sunderland very early in the season and you thought, right, they're up and running here. They, they can survive in the Premier League. And then by the time Borough won again at the back end of the season, they were both in real deep trouble. It, it, that day felt like it put Sunderland down and it gave Borough a chance. Um, but we obviously know the way that, that it turned out in the end. Um, and then obviously the last two at the Stadium of Light have both had red cards, haven't they? Two seasons ago, Dale Fry got sent off. Sunderland won it in the second half. Last season, Dan Neal got sent off. Borough won it in the second half. So um, clearly... Uh, keeping 11 players on the pitch is going to be pretty important for both players this week, get both teams this weekend. And, it, and it's rare that both of the, the, this, this fixture has taken place with both teams playing well or with, with both oh, teams yeah. in form. The, the one that springs to mind is the, 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 the one that you mentioned there with Dale Fry getting sent off. And that was in the January of that season, but Borough hadn't hit top gear under Carrick. And it was, 
it was late in that season that Sunderland really yeah. found top gear to get into playoffs, wasn't it? So although they were both playing well at the time, they, 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 neither of them were at the best. It, and and that probably the only game that stands out where both of them have been kind of on song. I mean, at the back end of last season, some of them were nose diving fast, weren't they? When yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, um, yeah, I'd agree. No, I'd agree. I think so. And 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 that obviously gives gives a little bit. You know, it it feels like a game where unless there's something crazy happens, like a sending off or something like that, we we should learn quite a bit more about both teams. You know, Borough, as you say, perfectly reasonable start but feels like they haven't got really anywhere near top gear yet. Can they do that? Are, you know, are they actually, are they near to getting there? Or, or, or is Carrick still kind of working out his team and are players still playing their way back into form? Sunderland have obviously started really well, but other than the home game against Burnley, you could argue they haven't really beaten anybody else. And obviously they're coming off the back of their first defeat of the season. So from a Sunderland perspective, I think it's, you know, was that was those four wins at the start the real deal, or actually was that a little bit over egging it and they're going to drop back over the next month or so? So I, you know, I think we will learn a fair bit about both teams from from Saturday's game, if only by for nothing else by the fact that it, that it is such a big game and they're going to have to handle it. And we often talk about betting on here, normally your success and my failures, but it's I'm just looking at the odds there and. Sunderland about seven to five, Borough around nine to five, the draw around eleven to five, which tells you yeah. the bookies don't really know. Oh no, yeah, I mean that seven to five on Sunderland is purely just because they're at home, isn't it? Mm. If, if this game was played at, being played at a neutral ground, I suspect it'd be pretty much level odds right across the board. Um, the draw feels short, but we'll get we'll get to predictions in a minute. And the, in classic fence sitting style, <laughs> an, early an early indication of what it feels like. It feels like a game where the draws are runner. Let's put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let, let's let's talk injuries then, and, and just briefly, because uh, as I said at the start, I'm aware that that um, actions might might quickly overtake this. But for Borough, um, well, there's there's difference really for Borough. It's whether two players, particularly one player, I think, because Vandenberg's the one who you think if, if he's fit, he's likely to come in if he's yeah. fully fit. Whereas Housen, you'd think it's going to be Morris and Hackney in midfield. Whereas with Sunderland, Dan Ballard, who hobbled off their game at Plymouth at the weekend, losing him would be a big blow. I know they signed Chris Meppen, but he hasn't played for them yet. And Leo Hjelda, <clears throat> their other option, hasn't kicked a ball yet this season in the, in the Championship. And then they also had Alan Brown pictured in a knee brace this week. Now, I know Brown didn't start the game last weekend. They played Rig, Bellingham and Dan Neal. But I don't know, a game of, of like this feels like Labrice might well have given Brown the nod for his experience and, and all and all that he brings in midfield. So, yeah, on, on both counts, it's going to be interesting to see what comes on Thursday afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so, Borough, first, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think I think if Vandenberg's fit, for all that Edmondson had a, uh, you know, perfectly fine debut, un unless, unless Vandenberg is fit, but only just fit and hasn't really trained, if Vandenberg has trained a reasonable amount this month, uh, this week rather, I think he goes straight back in the team because he's Borough's best defender, and he, he, he was, you know, he's starting to get a really nice relationship with Clark in the back half of last season um, and the very early days of this season. Um, and, and I just, I just, I struggle to see if Vandenberg is ready that he doesn't go straight back in the team. House, I think you're right, is a bit different. He, he's been, he's been kind of in and out for, you know, a decent chunk of the back end of last season, bits of pre-season, the start of this season. I don't think Housen goes back in the team because I think Morris clearly does. He was only on the bench in the last game because he'd, he'd been away on a national duty. I think Morris and Hackney are nailed on as Borough's starting two in midfield um, and, and there's no need to put Housen into the back. The other interesting one, I think, from a Borough perspective is McGree. How how sharp and ready is McGree? Now, obviously, he was an unused sub last weekend, but I think you could probably say that a lot of that was down to the fact that he had been out for so long and he hadn't necessarily been right up to full speed in training. With another week under his belt, is he at 100, you know, as near to 100% as you can get him without actually playing in games? Because if he is, I just wonder if Carrick might be tempted to play him 
on Saturday just because of the kind of occasion and game it's going to be. Azaz clearly probably gives you a more creative element playing on the left. We're assuming here that Conway is going to stay as the 10. Um, but does McGree give you that bit more solidity and potentially more protection for Borges, who, who maybe could do with it at the minute as he's settling in? I wonder. I, I think there's a chance if McGree's right, he plays. Now, he might he might actually be nowhere near sharp enough. And while he's back in the, on the bench and in training, he's actually you know still a couple of weeks off where they would want him. That's a different argument. If he's match ready, I wonder if McGree plays. Yeah, I... I... I was going to get to that. I agree because I think Borges had a, had a, a, a times difficult home debut last weekend. But we were chatting about it earlier this week, weren't we? When you did that piece on the options that Carrick's got yeah. in, in the attacking midfield areas, um, and when you think about the right hand side and, and how solid Luke Ayling was at the second half of last season, well, clearly Ayling's a different kept the fish to Borges. He, he knows the championship inside out, all the experience. But there was a settled partner there on the right, wasn't there? And when you think back to Ryan Charles's success two seasons ago, there was a settled partner in uh, in McGree on that left side, wasn't there? I, 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 I don't think that helped. That will have helped Lucas Engel or Alex Bangura last season. The fact that the, the left attacker was chopped and changed through no fault of anyone's really. It was injuries. A lot of it was yeah. forced, wasn't it? But... I, I, I do think Borges would be helped by having McGree there. I think there's natural balance there. So Zaza's natural instinctive tendency is to drift inside, isn't it? Because he, I think yeah. he'd probably see himself as a number 10 rather than the left yeah. side. Um, but then also, I mean, McGree's covered at left back when need be, hasn't there? There, there is that discipline as well, I think, on McGree's side. Just and I think you've got to accept that Patrick Roberts on the right for Sunderland is one of their biggest threats. And if Bo you know, Borges... you supporting as well. Exactly. Borges looks like, a, you know, and and, and it, all of his... Um, the, the interview that he did when he came with Mark Drury from Tees was very much, you know, I'm, I'm here to play football. I'm here to get forward. I'm here to be an attacking fullback. Well, that's fine. But it, like you say, if you're coming up against Roberts and Hume, who, who are a decent partnership down Sunderland's right-hand side, Roberts can be a bit mercurial, you know, but on his day, he's right up there in terms of, um, you know, threats from out wide in the championship. So I just think McGree would give him, you know, it's not as Azaz's fault that, that he's not, it's not natural for him to get back and cover because that's not where he's played all his football. That's not really what he's about. Whereas for McGree, it very much is. So, yeah, I do, I do wonder that one. From a Sunderland point of view, I think Ballard is really important. I think, I think... As you say, um, Regis Labris is doing his presser this afternoon on Thursday. So you'd, you'd, you'd imagine we'll get a pretty clear indication of what the state is. But for Borough fans who don't know, Ballard, who is Sunderland's probably best centre, well, he is but Sunderland's best centre half, um, got injured right at the end of their game last weekend against Plymouth, left the ground on crutches with his foot in a protective boot. Now, sometimes that is precautionary. It's been radio silence up at Sunderland so far this week in terms of what's happening with Ballard. But if he misses out, then they're, A, they're losing their best defender and B, they're probably bringing in Chris Metham, who has a pedigree, don't get me wrong, but has not kicked a ball yet for Sunderland since signing at the end of the transfer window. And he's having to go straight in to make his debut in a game, you know, a, a derby game and against a striker in Latter Laugh, who you would like to think can potentially exploit what what would you would imagine would be a lack of pace with Methon and, and 09 together at the back. If that is the centre half partnership, then you you would like to think Latalath can get at them. Because the Ballard injury came, it's worth pointing out, just a couple of weeks after Aji Alisa, who'd started their first three games and had kept the first three clean sheets, was also ruled out for 12 yeah. weeks. And and I don't know, it's interesting because O'Neill is the club captain and 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 tends to play, but Elise was excellent in those early weeks. It would have yeah. been interesting, you know. There's a case to be made that when everyone's fit, it's Ballard and Elise, and, yeah. and if that's the case, then they're missing they're, they're missing the first choice centre backs. What what about the threats? Do you think what what are the threats Borough need to be wary of? You, you mentioned Roberts there. Obviously, he's a player yeah. Borough know well, and he, and yeah. he's in the mood, isn't he? He had a tough season last season, but he's in the mood. And on the left side, they've got Romain Mundell, who's replaced Jack Clark and has done so incredibly well in his first few games since Clark moved to Ipswich. Yeah, Mundell's looked good. Um, I mean, it, you know, it, it, it looked from a Sunderland perspective like when Clark left, he was going to leave a massive gap down that left-hand side and B, you're losing your top scorer as well. So where are the goals going to come from? Well, Mundell's come in and not only has he 
played in Clark's position and looked pretty good. He scored three and three. So, um, you know, I, I think we'll, you know, we'll have to see how it goes as the season progresses. I, I don't necessarily think he's at Jack Clark levels, but he, he is a threat. And, and Sunderland play with those two wingers, largely as out and out wingers, which is um, relatively unusual in this day and age. Yes, they cut in and stuff, but but they hug the touchline. They play very wide. So I think that's definitely a threat that Borough are going to have to be aware of. And then the midfield three, I I know I know what you mean about Brown. I I think even if Brown had been fit, it probably would have been Rig, Bellingham, that's and Dan Neal. Um, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good that's midfield it. three. Yeah, I mean going up against Morris, Hackney, and Conway in more of a triangle. Some battle um, that. that is going to be potentially game defining. I think who can get hold of that <laughs> because you know Borough will want to dominate that area because so much of their play goes through there. When Sunderland click and and Bellingham, Neil, and Riggan and Borough fans might not know a lot about Chris Rigg. Seventeen, he he is going to be a proper player. He he's um he's a young kid who he made his debut for them at sixteen. A whole host of Premier League clubs were in for him in the summer, but he decided to sign his first professional contract with Sunderland. Um, I, I think that's the battle that will probably define the game because. Whichever unit, if you like, gets out on top is going to give their team an awful lot of control of the rest of the game. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because you think with Borough's three, like Sunderland's three is pretty set. They play a midfield three, don't they? Whereas yeah. with Borough, it's a two and a one. So yeah. you think, you mentioned there Conway's likely to keep his place. I, th I think he is, absolutely. He was Borough's best player last weekend. But you wonder whether, does having Conway in um, occupy Dan Neal and make Dan, ne Dan Neal think backwards rather than forwards? Or do Borough think, well, actually... We need someone in there who can mm. help out a bit more in midfield. I suspect more the former. I, I, I'd be I'd be amazed if Conway dropped out after his performance on Saturday. But I agree, it feels like that battle in there is going to go a long way to determining who wins the game. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, like you've alluded to there, does that bring Housen into the mix just to 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 give Borough that extra little bit of solidity if if Conway as a ten is going to potentially leave them slightly numerically short in there? I don't think so with you. I, I, I think Morris plays, I think Hackney plays, and I, and I don't think he leaves Conway out the way that he played at the weekend. So I think Borough go in like that. But but yeah, it, if there was to be a, a worry from, from a Borough perspective, it's probably that. Is is that, you know, more like, say, of an orthodox three for Sunderland going to potentially just give them a little bit of a numerical advantage in midfield? be interesting to see. And, and, and if Vandenberg does come back in, what... What what will he after, who who's it, who and what will he be up against in Eliza Meyenda? A mate of mine said to me earlier this week, kind of what's the story with Meyenda? Like who is he really? Yeah. Type thing. And and you know, just fill Borough fans in on Sunderland striker situation and the fact that Meyenda, someone who was on the fringes, didn't get a kick, looked so raw last season, is now their first choice. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Well, it's an in I mean, Sunderland striker situation has been a long running blum saga for years and years really last summer they brought in four strikers and Tony Mowbray was saying straight away at the start of the season effectively none of these are any good and that's the way it panned out over the season now I'll cut it, 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 when he said none of these are any good none of these are any good now because yeah. they were largely all young kids my ender was always the one he felt had most about him but he came in as an 18 year old I think when he came in maybe 19 18 or 19 um he's Spanish but he came from France um, had barely kicked a ball in senior football, barely kicked a ball for Sunderland in the first half of the season, went on loan to Hibs in the Scottish Premier League in the second half of last season, barely kicked a ball there, came back in the summer and you thought, well, Sunderland are going to have to sign strikers. And if they don't sign strikers, my ender won't be the one start of the season. It'll be Rusin, who's a Ukrainian lad, one of the other four that they brought in. Now, my ender played in pre-season, looked better. Start of the season because Sunderland hadn't managed to bring in anyone else. Looked actually quite good. You still thought, well, by the end of the deadline, they'll bring in an experienced striker. Yet again, that didn't happen. So my ender now is, is largely their only option as the number nine. He's looked much better this season than he has at any other stage for Sunderland. Uh, he scored a couple of goals. He looks stronger. He, he, he looks like he understands what being a number nine in the championship is all about. But it's a pretty small sample size. And, I, you know, other than the Burnley game, I don't think he's come up against centre-halves this season of the calibre of Matt Clark and Rav Vandenberg. So, 
I think it'll be interesting to see how he does um, because Sunderland are, are putting an awful lot of faith in him, and an all, you know he needs to, to to be Sunderland's man because there's not really an alternative. Um, just because he's looked really, you know, a lot better this season, I, I don't necessarily think it's nailed on that he'll look that good against Borough. I would, I I would think that Vandenberg and Clark will certainly be backing themselves to keep him quiet. Let's see. But- and, and, and clearly, this is a big game because it's Sunderland versus Borough. But when when you look at the league table, and I'm like completely aware that this is ridiculous, what it, fickle kind of football view that I'm about to about to spout. But um, and this was a case after last week as well, wasn't it? Like Borough on eight points after five games. If you win on Saturday, eleven points out of eighteen, like, decent enough return. If you were to lose eight points out of eighteen, you're suddenly looking and thinking that that's a poor return. Like I know that. Clearly, like Carrick and everyone inside the club doesn't share that view. But you get the point I'm trying to make. It kind of... Yeah, and that's the way fans work, isn't it? Because they go from game to game. They go from week to week. And and you're right. You can be massively high one week, massively down the other. I mean, yeah. You know, we've seen from the last two of these games that strange things can happen and there can be mitigating factors behind a result. If that doesn't happen, if it's just a, in quotes, normal game that's played out and, and Borough were to lose it, then I think, I think it, you know, it, it, it would feel like a disappointing start then. There's absolutely no doubt about that. You'd be coming off it potentially in the bottom half, um, you know, having thrown away a number of points. You've just lost to the team from just up the road. Um, I think I think this, this game, is, you know, I, I, I don't think it, I'm going to say as daft as it sounds like you did. But I think it will colour the way that the next month or so feels yeah. to a large extent because our Borough going to be going into the rest of the games before the next international break on the front foot or are they going to be going into it on the back foot? And I think this game will decide that. Yeah, you bailed me out there because that was exactly the point I was trying to make, but I was aware that the question, the way I'd asked it, was <laughs> absolutely, absolutely useless. Um, <laughs> if then, if it's a normal game, as you said, how, how's it going to go? I think there'll be goals. I think there'll be goals. I think it'll be quite open. Is this the fence? Is this the start this, of the fence? This is. This is, <laughs> this this is, is a long is. way around to saying 2 2. And I'll go a long way around to saying 1 1. Mate, do you know what I'm jumping into there? 2 2. <laughs> no, but go on. Go on. Um, I, yeah, because I think I think they are too closely matched sides at the minute. I do. I, I still think over the course of the season, Borough will finish above Sunderland. I thought that at the start of the season. Sunderland have, have pleasantly surprised me by how well they've started. And because of how bad Sunderland were at the back end of last season, you kind of forget the quality that there actually is in that squad. And there is. But I do think they lack a striker. Um, I think if Ballard's out, it's a big blow. Um, so over the course of the season, I think Borough will finish above them. But I think as we've kind of said all the way through... It's just not quite clicking for Borough fully yet. Now, this might be the game where it does, but I think they're still finding their way a little bit in terms of the new lads coming in and and how they're going to set up. Um, But I do think both sides at the minute look better going forward than they do defensively. I think think just by nature of the game, they'll want to attack. They'll be on the front foot. I think it'll be be this way and that, and I think it'll be, yeah, I'm going to go 2-2. I, I hope it's an, an, a normal game. I hope there's nothing that, uh, you know, if there's if there's yeah. a fair sending off, then fair enough. But I hope nothing kind of colours it. I hope I hope it's just a... Yeah, because let's be honest, both of the last two sending offs were soft, were they? Yeah, they were. Very yeah. soft. And Dan Neil, all right, he might have said something, whatever. It, it, even with a Borough hat on, that was a soft sending off as well. So And the Fry one, you're left looking at again and again and again afterwards. Yeah. Oh, that one with that coming together with Stuart. So I hope the, the game is just played out because I think it'll be fascinating to see how how it does play out, if that's the case. And, yeah. I, and, I, think, and I think the two good teams this year, I, I agree with you. I think, I know the league table doesn't show it now. I think Borough are stronger. I think Borough have a stronger and more balanced team. And I, and I don't think Borough will lose. I was just looking again at those odds. I think almost two to one is a good price for Borough. At the the Borough, weekend. yeah. Um, yeah. But, and I said two one Borough earlier this week, I, I think I'll swear towards one all. I, I think, a bit, and I don't, I, I, think, I think a draw is a decent result for both. At this stage, yeah. I think the draw yeah. is a 
Yeah, because it, it avoids the, the the you know the the negative scenario that we were painted if you lose the game and, and all of a sudden you're on the back foot. A draw, let's you know, probably you know, yeah, Borough as the away team, you know, you'd take a draw. Sunderland, you know, off the back of their first defeat, I think they would probably deep down <coughs> take a draw as well. But you know, that's not to say that either team's going to play for a draw because. You know, that's just not going to happen in a game like this. But, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think it draws a disaster for either team. And just very briefly, after that is a game against Narcisse Palacios Stoke. Yes. Right? Which is what we talked yes. about. The type of appointment that we talked about earlier this week, isn't it, that we suspected might be the case. Well, And it's the type of game that Borough of Blumen draw on this season, isn't it? Let's be, let's be absolutely brutally honest. You look at that straight away and you think Borough win 2-0. And then this season it's been 2-2 Portsmouth, 1-1 Preston. Well, Stoke and Orb is right up that camp. I mean, yeah, Sunderland is really big because it's Sunderland. Regardless of what happens in the Sunderland game, I think the Stoke game is fairly big for Borough because they just have to show they can win that type of home game. You know what? Yeah, a game that they're expected to win at home. Well, they haven't they haven't been able to do that well enough so far this season. So yeah, that'll be interesting. We're both there just, at Sunderland, aren't we? It's a rare. I was just about to say, yeah, I was just about we to very, say. Very, very, very rarely get to sit next to each other and uh, cover a football game. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, and I am I am really looking forward to it. As I said at the start, I, uh, you know, like good sense for not a fan of that kickoff time early doors Saturday no. but I'm uh, yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to it it'll be fascinating to see how yeah. it plays out I think well thanks thanks for watching thanks for listening uh, let us know your predictions share in the comments and let us know your predictions for Saturday and be as specific as Scott often is because then we can have a chat about it next week and, and look back on the predictions and see if anyone's nailed it when we when we get back together early next week to look back on the Weir Tees derby, the first Weir Tees derby of the season and see how that plays out. As we said at the start, do subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to the video or the podcast, then... Tell uh, you mean, tell you me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, enjoy the game on Saturday if you're going. If you're not going, if you're watching it, whatever, enjoy... Enjoy your weekend and we'll be back next week with another You Are My Borough looking back on the derby. Take care.